Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. When a person has periodontitis and needs treatment, they have a right to know, in accurate, understandable terms, what exists, what they can expect from treatment, what constitutes treatment, and what are their responsibilities if treated. An examination has been completed on the patient, the information reviewed, and she is ready to receive the report. The following presentation will be done as it is in private practice. Mrs. Cripps, the disease process you have in your mouth is what is called periodontitis. Now this does have a more common name and that is pyrrhea. And this type of a disease process does slowly destroy both the gum and the bone support around your teeth. Now if you're treated and if you cooperate well and your health remains okay, the chances are that the majority of your teeth will last extended periods of time, 10, 15 years or longer. In fact, your objective should be to try to maintain the majority of these teeth as long as you live. Now there are three teeth that are marked questionable. That means that they have some limitations as to how long they might last. So even if you are treated and cooperate well, they won't last as long as the other teeth in your mouth. But they do have a good chance of lasting three to five years or even longer, dependent an awful lot on how well you cooperate in the future. So on that basis, I think you should consider comprehensive periodontal treatment to try to arrest the disease process in your mouth and help you maintain all of your teeth functioning comfortably as long as you possibly can. Now, if this treatment is carried out, the first thing we do is record a couple more items of an examination procedure. The next step is that we review with you rather extensively oral hygiene procedures to make sure that you can effectively brush the tooth and the gum both inside and out. And this you should do at least three times a day. And at least once a day, you should effectively clean between your teeth with dental floss or something comparable to dental floss. Now these areas are very critical for cleanliness because this is one of the major reasons that you have the problem that you do. If you have a lower resistance to periodontal disease, which you obviously do because you have the problem, and then you don't clean 100% every day around your teeth, that leaves food there that feeds the germs that cause these problems for you. So oral hygiene becomes very, very important. The next step is that the hygienist in the office will do what is called some deep scaling and cleaning of the roots of the teeth underneath the gum throughout your mouth. Now this is a very extensive cleaning process, much more vigorous than just a routine cleaning. The next procedure is that we balance out your bite. Now when I closed your mouth up and down like this when I was examining you, all of your teeth didn't touch at the same time. You had like in this area where the tooth hit first and then you slid and eventually touched all your teeth. Everybody's bites like that. But everybody doesn't have some bone loss going on around their teeth like you do. So we balance out your bite or what we call an occlusal adjustment. And carbon paper is placed between your teeth and your jaws closed up and down and say it does touch here first. That will leave a little blue mark and that spot is reduced or actually ground away. And this is continued until all those teeth hit at about the same time. And this distributes the forces then more evenly in your teeth and makes it more gentle in the bone there holding your teeth in place, knowing that you have lost some bone support in the past. And the next part of treatment is where we get a little bit mean to you. So far, we've been pretty kind up to this point. Say this is the crown of the tooth and this the gum. When I examined your mouth, I was measuring how far under that gum I could go. Now normally I can go just a short distance, but in your mouth I was going further than that. Now say I can go down this far, which means that that gum tissue is diseased and detached from the tooth this far down. So that gum is acting as a pocket, a food collector, and a troublemaker. In order to get this gum as healthy as possible, the diseased portion of that gum tissue is removed. So what that means is that the gum tissues down around the necks of the roots of your teeth that are diseased are removed. The outside gum tissue that's healthy is kept and sewed back down around those teeth. So it heals back to the tooth more healthy, but at a slightly lower level, making these teeth then appear a little bit longer than they had in the past. 
Also, since more of these root surfaces are uncovered, your teeth are more sensitive to heat, cold, and touch, especially cold. Now, this increased root sensitivity will usually subside within one to six months and subside enough that it's no longer a major problem to the patient. Occasionally it doesn't, but usually it does. When this gum surgery is carried out, half of your mouth is completed in one appointment. The upper and lower, say, on the right side. The area is frozen, just like is done for fillings or extractions. Then do the surgery. A dressing is then placed in between the teeth and over that surgerized area. So this dressing sets up in your mouth like a little cast. It mechanically protects the area and also helps to keep it as comfortable as possible while it's healing. Ten days later, dressings and sutures, they're removed. And then about a month after that, we do the other side. Same thing all over again. Freeze it, do the surgery, place the dressing, ten days later, remove it. Another month after that, we have you back in, and the hygienist, again, extensively reviews oral hygiene procedures with you. It's absolutely paramount to maintain health once it's established. She cleans your mouth up. I check the cleanliness of your mouth, check your bite, and examine the entire mouth finally and make sure everything is healed as satisfactorily as possible. Now, this is what constitutes comprehensive periodontal treatment. It takes about four months from start to finish to complete it. All of your teeth, with the exception of three, have an excellent chance of lasting for extended periods of time, 10, 15, 20 years or longer. Three teeth have some limitations, but they still have a good chance of going up to three to five years and longer, depending on how well you take care of yourself afterwards. And this is what should be done in your mouth. Now, in order to carry out this amount of treatment, it costs X number of dollars. And all the information is on the record, so if you decide to go ahead, you can talk to the lady at the desk or merely call in and set up the appointments. This completes a particular type of presentation talking about periodontitis, what it is, what the patient can ex expect from treatment, what constitutes treatment, and what are their responsibilities if treated. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.